Well, good morning, everybody. Ooh, it's Danny back from Deep South Homestead. Taking my break for the morning, guys. It's, uh, believe it or not, it's only 7.47. I woke up this morning, and it was 71 degrees. The heat index was only, say, at like 75. And I told one I was like, oh, my word. I said, it's actually cool outside. So I jumped up. I've been framing some walls up over at my shop. Uh, got some projects going on over there. And the humidity just popped in all of a sudden. And when it did, I was wet within just a few minutes. I just soaking wet. And so I said, you know what? My knee was giving me, it wasn't hurting bad, but I could tell it was starting to swell. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to chill out for a while. Go sit down over to the cabin and uh, shoot my porch time. I think I'll do that. And, uh, and it's really... A beautiful day. I mean, there's I can see a few thunderheads sticking up in the background back yonder. There's always every morning I look at the weather off the coastline. There's rain every morning. It comes inland. We usually yesterday evening. Uh, let me put it this way. Uh, Saturday, we got uh, a quarter of an inch, a half an inch. I'm sorry, we got a half an inch of rain. Just a slow, steady rain for about an hour worked i'm talking about guys it done so much good for our garden uh i have planted other stuff in the garden out here and man it within after that rain it's all jumped up like two inches high i'm just praying now that um it was really good on the hopi corn um it done it done it good but i had an incident that happened with the hopi corn i've had to replant some of it uh a squirrel found it and went down through there and just cut off several of my, how I planted them in, y'all saw, and I planted them in the clumps. Went down and cut them all off and dug the seeds all up on them in the heat of the day when I was normally not out here. Well, needless to say, now I have my shotgun sitting right here beside me, and I can see my corn. Uh, I'm on call now. If you're a squirrel, you get eradicated. I mean, because I, I, I don't know which one it was that found it. Uh, there's a giant hickory nut tree out here that's got hickory nuts on it. And <laughs> I don't know where he came from, which one he was. So at this point, they're all culprits. And I'm going to take them all out, you know. So I can't afford to lose any more of my garden. Because that, see, now that threw me back. My Hopi corn was like six to eight inches tall. And now that's completely gone. I got to start all over. And that's another several days for germination to get back where I was and you only got so many days to raise something and I was pushing it as it was so we'll see how it goes I don't know but um the weather is really been wacky a lot here lately it's it's like a roller coaster the mornings will be cool then it turns humid there's no wind in the mornings like right now there's no breeze none whatsoever steamy hot and when it gets to be about 100 something degrees in the day, the wind will start blowing when you can't get out here and do anything in it. And I told one day, I said, you know, if the wind would just blow in the mornings, I don't care if it blows in the middle of the day when I'm not out in it. But if it would blow in the mornings and the evenings, well, we could get a lot done. But I'm not in control of that, so I don't get to have a say in it. But anyway, <laughs> enough, enough ranting about that. And guys, I, I do hope everybody continues to pray for... Uh, for those in Kentucky and Missouri and places up there like that that's had all this flooding. Uh, I, I've, I've said all I can say over the years about extremes, about when it's wet, it's going to be extremely wet. When it's dry, it's going to be extremely dry. When it's cold, it's going to be extremely cold. When it's hot, it's going to be extremely hot. Guys, this is part of, whether you want to believe it or not, it's part of the Grand Solar Minimum. It is... It's historical. I'm friends with some of the best scientists in the world. And I'm not going by what somebody else puts out there. I'm going by actual scientific data from history. Now, this is, this is history from way back yonder. They bring it back forward. And based off of history, yeah, there's other things going to happen. So, I mean, it is what it is. I can't change it. Is man taking advantage of it and beginning to manipulate the weather with it also? Yeah, because they want, to take they want to take credit for it. And then they're manipulating the weather. They're doing all kinds of things with the weather that's just crazy. Trying to 
claim part of this, and they have nothing to do with what's going on other than the fact that they're manipulating part of it. And, and guys, it's sad. It's really sad that we have to endure this type of stuff because man just wants to play God. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about some things today. Uh, just pay attention as I go through porch time. I'm gonna, I may throw a little nugget in here and there. Just be ready to grab it. Uh, I owe someone an explanation. On the live stream the other night, someone asked, and, I, and if they're on the live stream, I'm pretty sure they watch Porch Time. They ask about our Apple Press that we have and our Apple Crusher and uh, stuff to uh, that we squeeze our scuppernongs and all with. How we like it, we love it. Uh, they asked me what brand it was. At the moment, I did not remember, but I do know now. Uh, it came off of Amazon. It was called uh, E. So I'm just going to give you the letters that it is. It's called E J W O X. Now this is the brand that's stamped on the side of it, and you know it's on it. We also not only did we get the crusher, but we got the thing that. It chops the apples up into little pieces before they're crushed to go on top of it. That you'll find that in the in a section that goes with the apple press there with it, because without the crusher part to go with the apples, you can't really press an apple unless you crush them all up. Uh, now the scuppernongs you don't run through the crusher thing that chops them all up because the seeds are bitter and your your musket your scuppernong juice will be bitter. But um, I wanted to give that out to the person who asked on a live stream, and I did not have an answer. Um, hope that helps if you're watching. I don't remember who it was. I just remember the question. But um, today, guys, I want to I want to focus a little bit about some of what's going on and the mentality of people. I want to I want us to think today about a man in the Bible, and I think he makes a really good comparison to what's going on in the world today. And the man's name is Lot. He was Abraham's uh, kinfolk. And um, technically, he really wasn't supposed to go on Abraham's journey with him, but Abraham took him anyway and ended up having to separate from him. But Lot was a lot like people today are. And just stay with me, and I think you'll kind of agree that once we get to certain points that you'll understand what I'm talking about. Now when Abraham and Lot began to separate themselves, Abraham gave Lot the choice. He told him, he says, you can take the, the, the plains where the grass is luscious and green and everything, or you can take the, the desert, whatever, whichever one you want. I'll give you the opportunity. And of course Lot, being the man that he was, chose the fruitful plains. And the luscious green plains of Sodom and Gomorrah and all in there. And, and he moved his people into that direction because it was really too many for... Uh, Abraham and him were beginning... Or the, the servants were beginning to have some problems between each other. And Abraham didn't want dissension between the family because of his personality. He was a phlegmatic temperament. And he, uh, he just wanted peace. And he said, be best, Lot, if you would go one way and I went another way. Well, even though he did that, Abraham ended up rescuing Lot several times out of situations he just got himself into. and But there come a day. There come a day when Abraham was sitting in his tent and two men showed up. Abraham immediately recognized who they were. Now, I want you to understand some things here. Abraham, it says, was sitting in the door of his tent. Now, he was, he was there for a reason. Abraham and his whole, I'm going to call it clan of people, uh, the men folk had just been circumcised. So they weren't in the best of spirits, okay? Abraham was sitting in the, the door of the tent where the cool air was, where he could get some cool air on him. Because in the tent it was probably pretty warm. And when the uh, when the angels, they there were angels, they had showed up and Abraham recognized that. He prostrated himself before them and uh, you know, they killed a fatty they killed a kid and uh, the goat and had it cooked and had Sarah make up some bread and they had a, had a meal. Well, the angels told Abraham what they were going to do down in Sodom and Gomorrah and, well, actually the plains, all the plains down in there. There's, there's like five cities in there. And uh, 
and I'm, I'm going somewhere with this, so hang with me. Um, they told Abraham they were going to destroy all that. Well, Abraham said, you know, for the sake of 100 people, for the sake of 50, for the sake of 25, for the sake of 10, he got all the way down to 10 because he knew that Lot and his family was down in there. And, and the best I can tell, there was either 8 or 10 people in Lot's family. And there's a really a great correlation between, if it was 8, between Lot being pulled out of a city and Noah being 8, being pulled out of the, uh, the world at the time that he was. <clears throat> it's a great Bible study in that. But that's not for today. Um, today, I want us to think about the man, Lot, and who Lot actually was, and how he's a lot like people are today, because you know, if you read in the Scriptures, it says, when the Son of Man returns, it'll be like it was in the days of Noah, and also it mentions in the days of Lot. So we got to, not only, everybody wants to talk about the days of Noah, but they forget about Lot. And we have to go back and we have to look at what was going on in Lot's time. I mean, what was the comparisons of today? Well, some of the comparisons was the, uh, the judges of that town, of those cities during that particular time, had made lots of wicked laws. And that correlates with what we're going through today. Uh, our judges... Many of our judicial system is wicked today, just like it was during that time. And Lot, evidently, because of his lineage, and the fact that he was of Abraham's lineage, the Lord felt it necessary to spare him. Now Lot was a, uh, let's say he was a godly man, and... He was living, even though he knew better. Now, he was, he was with Abraham all these years, and he learned under Abraham. He knew right from wrong. He knew sin. He knew righteousness versus unrighteousness. He knew all this stuff, but yet he was a one of God's lineage living in the midst of a wicked, sinful cities. Not just one, but several. And it didn't seem to bother Lot that he lived in these cities like this. Uh, because Lot was a wealthy man, and he, because he was a wealthy man, the cities automatically took him in. And Lot, I'm not going to say he dabbled in sin, but he didn't condemn it. He turned a blind eye to it. And when the angels came to the city, Lot immediately recognized them, I and mean, he was godly enough, he knew who they were, he prostrated himself before them, and he knew what the men of the town would do, because it said both old and young men encompassed his house once the men went in, and it got to be dark, and it said they come out and wanted these men to do, and, and in the King James Version, it, has, it says to do things carnally. And there's an italicis, so that was something that's been added to it. Uh, we don't actually know what their intentions were, whether they were going to abuse them physically or abuse them sexually or whatever uh, the trend is to be a sexual abusement. Just simply because, and I'll tell you why, is because Lot agreed to take two of his virgin daughters and give to the men of the town to do... And I could not... I don't understand this because I'm a father of two girls that loves my girls very much and would actually kill someone in a heartbeat for messing with them. Uh, for a father to look at a, a group of men and say, take my two daughters and do whatever you will with them. They're virgins. Just, I can't comprehend that. That tells me the depravity that Lot had sunk into being in this town, because, see, the fact that the girls were still virgins told me that one of two things, either the whole city was homosexual, and they could care less about the girls, and which proved to be, proved to be pretty accurate there at the end, uh, or Lot still had enough godliness about him that he raised them to be virgins. Now, it's evident that Lot must have had nothing but girls. 
Because when the angels ask him, did he have any more family, it says yes. And he says, and he went to his sons-in-laws. And it never mentioned a son. It just mentioned sons-in-laws. So evidently, all Lot had was girls. And the sons-in-laws didn't adhere to what he said. They thought he was more of a joke than anything else. Well, when the time come for the judgment of God to befall them, now this is where... I want to start making some correlation to what's going on today. Because judgment is befalling America today. Actually the world, but I'm, I'm talking about America in particular. Because that's where we live at. Um, when judgment began to befall, the angels told Lot what was going to happen. They said, tomorrow we're going to destroy this place with fire and brimstone. Go get your family, gather them up so we can get out of here before the sun comes up in the morning. Well, the next, he did go talk to them, but they wouldn't come. And the next morning, I want you to pay attention. Lot procrastinated still. He still tried to hang on. And eventually, it says that the angels had to lay hold upon him, his wife, and his two daughters and drag them out of the city. And once they were out of the city, he told them, he said, flee to the mountains. Now, if God is telling you to do something, what did, what did Lot say? I don't want to go to the mountains. Bid me to go to this small city over here. Well, I think it was Zoar. Bid me to go over to this small city. It's a little place. If I go to the mountains, I'll just die. He still wanted to go back into the cities because he knew that that's where the prosperity was. He had gotten comfortable being around sin, and he didn't. He just couldn't trust God. And guys, is that not where we are today? I mean, we're sitting here in America. America is about to be destroyed, literally, piece by piece. I've put out, I've told y'all, you know, California is probably going to be the first. Um, it's the poster child for sin in America. Things that happen in California, and I sent a guy an email this, and he may watch this, and he may recognize it, because he was asking me some questions about California. Whatever happens in California, usually the rest of the United States, it's about a 10-year cycle. About 10 years later, the rest of the United States follows, 7 to 10 years, follows suit of whatever goes on in California. And California was our first poster child for sin, actually. And then it wasn't long afterwards, the rest of the United States followed suit of things that happens in California. Well, if that's the case, when God passes judgment, I mean, if I was a just person, I would go to the first one who began the sin, and I would punish them first. If that's the case, then California, because it was a poster child for sin for America, and has been the icon of sin, it would be the first place I'd punish. Now, I'm not saying that's going to come to fruition, but I'm telling you, if it was me, that's what I would do. And I kind of, and God has shown me some things that's going to happen. And one of them will be with California. One of them will be with New York. One of them will be with Florida. One of them will be with Vegas. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you guys, y'all want to know. I'm not going to go into in-depth detail about it. God showed it to me. Um, I'll just tell you, these are some places that you're going to start seeing things happen in. You know? Uh... Okay? I mean, I'm not going into detail about it. I'm just going to tell you these things that God has shown me about these places. And if you want to know some things about uh, the rest of the United States, so God gave me this vision in the early, the mid-80s. Uh, there's another man I found out later on who had the same exact vision I had. His name was Dimitri Dudman. You can look him up. He's passed on, but his son is still carrying on the, uh, his grandson is still carrying on the, uh, his ministry. Uh, but guys, Lot would not turn loose of prosperity. He just, God told him, go rural, go into the mountains. He, he, he would not do it. He, he, and, and the angels told him, said, because you've asked this, and, and I think, I, I, I can't prove this, but I'm just going to speculate here just a moment. The angels was running out of time. 
because they had to bring the fire and brimstone down, and I'm going to explain something to you here in a minute, hopefully, because they were on a time schedule. There was a body passing through uh, our solar system, and it was on a particular schedule, and they had to get Lot out of there because they knew that when this body passed through, that the debris from this body was going to fall, and it was going to hit that area because God had pre-planned it that way. And finally, they said, go, go to this small city, and we will spare it. Well, the scripture says that the sun had done come up good. In other words, they were behind schedule, and I'm, I'm guessing that uh, spiritually some things had to happen behind the scenes because a lot messed with the time clock there just a little bit. But it said fire and brimstone rained down, destroyed the cities, destroyed every living thing, it destroyed the plains, it destroyed everything. It's all gone. Just all gone. And the disbelief of Lot's wife, she's still... And I understand... I guess if I understand anything, I understand Lot's wife more than I understand anything else because she left, evidently, a couple of daughters back in the city that got killed. And that... A mother's love, she just turned around to see what her daughters was going to endure. And literally, um, now we don't know if she turned around and tried to run back into the city. It doesn't tell us that. I kind of speculate that she probably tried to go back into the cities and the angels could not contain her. And, and God just turned her into a pillow of salt and just took her, you know. Uh, and... I guess if I understand anything, I understand the love of a mother for her daughters. And Lot actually fleed to this city. And it says that once he made it to that city, that um, the angels destroyed everything after they knew he was at that city. Now I want you to understand, let's go a little bit further with this. Lot went to this city, but what does it say happened just right after that? Lot saw what happened to these other cities, and he knew the wickedness that was in these cities. He knew it, just like we know today the wickedness that's in our country, yet we don't do anything about it. We sit back and we go, well, I don't want to get involved. I'd rather not, you know, I don't want to just, I just don't want to, you know, it, I just don't want to be a part of it. And we, we just say, if I turn a blind eye to it, it'll go away. Well, no, it won't go away. Uh, when Lot saw what happened to those cities, what happened to him next? He panicked. And he realized the city that he went to, even though it was a little city, was just as wicked as those other cities were. And he said, you know what? If God destroyed them like that, he might destroy this one, and I might die in here too. So he fled to the mountains. Him and his, He took his two daughters and fled to the mountains. He did it anyway. After it settled in and he saw the power of an almighty God and that God was serious. God did not, he was not joking. Guys, in America, judgment is coming on our country. These fires and floods and droughts and famines and food shortages and all this kind of stuff. This is God's judgment. Because we've been sinful. Now, just like Lot... We're all turning a blind eye to it. I'm trying my best not to. I mean, Revelation, or not Revelation, but the Scripture tells us, come out from among her and be ye separate. Why does God tell us that? Just like he told Lot, come out of her. Be separate. That's what he's telling us, guys. He's fixing to bring destruction upon this country. Now, I, don't, I know some of the things is probably going to happen, I don't know the magnitude of it, I'll be honest. But I do know some things he's shown me that's going to happen, and it's not pretty. It's not going to be popular. And the thing about it is, I try to warn people, I try to tell people, and they turn a blind eye to everything. Wanda and I, sometimes it gets hard. And we just throw our hands up and say, what's the use? And I told her, I said, Wanda, we have to keep going. We have to keep on. Um, and she said, but, and she says this to me. She said, Danny, God released you last year. You don't have to do this anymore. And I said, I know it. But he also told me that if I want to, I can still do it. And if I do it, I will be blessed for doing it. And I said, and I have a heart for people. And I, I, I want people to, to get out of this sinful 
mess that we're in and prepare as much as you can for what's coming. Um, now, is everybody going to make it? No, not everybody's going to make it. Am I going to make it? I can't answer that. Uh, it, it all depends on to the magnitude of what happens, happens. Okay? You know, it's like the coastlines of the world is fixing to experience some issues. I'm not going into it. I'm just going to tell you, if you're on a coastline, be aware. It's going to happen pretty quick. Um, and I'm talking about the whole world. I'm not talking about just America. The world. Um, that's all I'm going to say. I'm just going to tell you. I told you there'd be some nuggets in this video. That's one of them. Now, the correlation between Lot and the people today is that people have become familiar with sin. They've become used to it. They laugh and giggle and carry on with about it. And, uh, they, they've just become relaxed. They're familiar with it now. Christ never intended for us to be familiar with sin. There's sin in so many different ways today, guys, that we don't even really recognize. And, and I'm... I want us to understand that Christ is probably not who we think He is. Now, the Scripture says in the latter days of this age, He's going to send a strong delusion upon the earth. And that people are going to fall for it. And that if He didn't shorten the days, even His most elect would be fooled by it. And then if you read in the scriptures, it'll say, I'm not going to tell you where it's at. I want you to hunt it up. You can Google it and find it just like that. So there's no need me telling you. I want you to look for it. He says, if I'm in the desert, don't go out into the desert. Or if I'm here, don't go there. If I'm here, don't go, don't do this. If you hear I'm over there, don't do it. Because when the next time Christ comes, Christ's coming in the clouds. Okay? He's not going to come in the desert. He's not going to come here. He's not going to come there. But why is man going to fall for this so easily? I'll give you some food for thought now. In your mind, because that's where this is, is in your mind. What do you believe Jesus looks like? How is he portrayed? A man with long hair, a beard, wearing a big long white overgarment. Well, I'm here to tell you, and don't be shocked by this. He doesn't look like that. Okay? And people's going to go, well, how do you know? You ain't never seen him. <laughs> I may have never seen him, but the scripture tells us what he is and what he is not. First off, does he have long hair? The answer is absolutely not. Does he have short hair? The answer is absolutely not. Now, okay, you're going to say, now how do you know this? Well, first of all, you got to study the Jewish custom. The Jewish custom was, during his particular period in history, if you had short hair, which is like what I've got right now, very short hair on top of my head, you were either a homosexual, or you owed a debt to society that you did not pay, and your hair was shaved from your head, so that people would recognize you and not loan you money or not do business with you. Secondly, the reason I know he didn't have long hair was because he's a high priest. And in Ezekiel, I'm not going to tell you where it's at, you can find it, you just Google it, it's there. In Ezekiel, it tells us the qualifications of a high priest because Christ is our high priest. And one of them is that a high priest could not have long hair. So you go, well, if he didn't have long hair and he didn't have short hair, what did he have? Well, let's discuss historically what was long hair and what was short hair. Because there's absolutely no verses in the Bible that deals with this. There's some that's taken out of context, but there's none that actually deals with this. During that particular period in history, long hair was classified that once it reached the bottom of the shoulder blades, it was classified as long hair. 
Anything above the bottom of the shoulder blades was classified as short hair. Not necessarily short hair, but hair that could be worn and, and be within the law of the Torah. So, more than likely, Christ's hair was just down to his shoulders somewhere right here on his head. I mean, just right here somewhere around his neckline. Because that was the custom of the day. Now, why are people going to be fooled so easily when this delusion happens? Because it says that in the scripture that if they, if, I, if they say I'm in the desert, don't go in the desert. Well, why would people go? Because they have a mental image of what Christ looks like. And when these anti-Christ people that are going to be portraying themselves as Christ appears, they're going to appear with the long hair, the beard, and people are going to immediately associate that as being Christ. They're going to go, yes, it is Christ, because these men are going to show up when the food crisis of the world is at its worst. And just like Jesus, or Yeshua, or Yahushua, depending on the dialect you choose, just like he fed 5,000 people with the fish and the loaves, these people portraying themselves to be Christ is going to be able to work miracles. They're going to be able to feed large numbers of people with small amounts of food. And because of the mental image that people have of what Jesus they think he is and the way that these imitators will look people's going to automatically associate them as oh that's Christ and look he's doing miracles in the bible he fed 5000 people with the two loaves and the, I mean two fish and the five loaves of bread and he's feeding all these people he's working miracles this is Christ and they just flock to him because of the delusion and We've got to be careful, people. Brothers and sisters, we've got to be careful. Because we live in a country today that's turned a blind eye to sin. We've turned our back on sin. And we've pretended that if we don't participate in it, that it doesn't exist. Well, that's not true. We've become so complacent with our success in, the, in America that we don't want to rock the boat. Just like Lot. Lot didn't want to rock the boat. Lot went back to that small city because Lot probably had dealings financially with that other city. There was five of those cities. Now imagine he had financial dealings in all of these cities because he was a wealthy man. And he just said, don't send me to the mountains up there. I have no money. I'll die. I've got no way to do anything. Please let me go to this little city. It's just a little city. Don't we do the same thing when God tells us get away from a certain place or get out of the system or do this or do that? Do we not sit back and say, but Lord, I can't. Uh, it's, it's my finances. I can't. You know, when it comes to this, uh, I lose my job. I can't make it without my job. Lot did the same thing. God told him, says, go rural. Go get out of here. Get. Get out of the system. God tells us in their latter days, come out from among her, get out of her. But many of us said, no, I can't because I had to do this, you know. I, I got to work. I got to do this. I got to do that. Guys, we dropped the ball. We all, I mean, we all have fallen. We, we've all done it. I mean, I've done it. Everybody's done it. We've all dropped the ball. Um, and we're going to pay for it. America's got to pay for what she's done. And um, the easiest way, God, when the Lord punished Israel, He did it in several different ways. Israel was given to us in the Old Testament or the Tanakh uh, as an example for us. He used His people to be an example for us. When Israel sinned against God, God allowed a couple of things to usually happen. One, 
was famine. They starved. You know, they, no food, nothing. And he, he allowed famines to come. And then he allowed the enemy to invade them from within and without, to overtake them and become captives of them. And they become slaves. To do, it, all throughout history, m numerous different times, they become slaves to other people. And, um, and the Lord had to constantly bring them back. Well, guys, this time there's not going to be any coming back because this time we're in the final days. The Lord's just going to come back Himself. Now, I'm not a... Please don't... I think this is where people's going... We're going to have the big falling away is uh, when people think that this is Jesus in the desert and in the places where He's working all these miracles and all and they find out that He's not. And evil has already come upon the world. And they thought they were going to be just sucked up out of here miraculously before anything ever happened in a pre-rapture situation. Uh, I'm not going to condemn you if you believe that way. I'm going to pray and hope you're right. <laughs> but I, I'm not going to get into any discussions because that's not a that's not a that's not a thing that's going to keep you from going to heaven or hell. Right. That's just a personal preference. But a lot of people's going to fall away when they realize that they weren't snatched up out of here and they didn't make any preparations. And now, just like with this here, they weren't prepared and they fell, they fell prey to it and they, uh, they fell prey to the system. You know? They, did, they, was, they become a lot. They couldn't let go of the system. And is it hard? It, it's very hard, guys. It's not going to be easy. That's why I've been trying to talk them on uh, faith as much as I have. Because without strong faith in the armor of God, we won't make it. I'm just being honest. We will not make it. We've got to have strong faith. We've got to put on the whole armor of God. Uh, because there's going to be things that we're going to see that's going to shake our faith to the core. And unless it's strong, unless we've not been like Lot and we've made our minds up, we're not going to bend because of financial pressure or because of success or whatever, we'll fail if we don't, uh, if we don't strengthen our faith. So let's don't be a Lot. Because you see, Lot eventually went to the mountains anyway, and you know what? He didn't die. Now, there was some sexual immorality that went on between him and his daughters there. But there again, that was a Jewish custom. Because his daughters didn't want his, their father to be left seedless. Because that's the reason I say he had no sons. Even, his, even in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, he had no sons, evidently. Because he didn't go to any of them. It didn't mention him going to a son. And his daughters wanted him to have a seed to carry on. So they committed an incestual act with him without his con consentment because they got him drunk and done it. And that's where the uh, Moabites and the other tribes just slipped my mind, starts with an A, uh, come from to this day, from that, from that immoral sexual act. Guys, that's where we're at today. We, we think if we turn a blind eye to sin, we're gonna, it's still it's going to be okay. God's going to not hold us accountable. No, the scripture says, where does judgment begin? At the house of God. That's where judgment begins, because God holds us responsible. That's why people say, Danny, why do you have to talk about God so much? Because if I don't, he's going to hold me responsible. And when I stand at the Bema, and I see the great white throne judgment all take place, um, I don't want somebody standing there looking at me going, well, why didn't you ever tell me? And then cast off into a lake of fire. I just, I don't want that on me. I don't want their blood on my hands. So I have to say what I have to say. And I don't ask you to agree with me. That's one thing I don't ask. I ask that you do your own study and your own research. And connect yourself with like-minded people. Uh, if you hang around drunks, you'll be a drunk. If you hang around depressed people, you'll be depressed. If you hang around rich people, 
you'll be rich. If you hang around happy people, you'll be happy. If you hang around sad people, you'll be sad. If you hang around miserable people, you'll be miserable. So, don't worry about feelings. If you got to get rid of some people out of your life because they're dragging you down, get rid of them. But my friends, the one you don't get rid of is up above our Heavenly Father. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.